Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. Welcome to the When You're Worth podcast show and just want to do a bit of mindset today. I want to start with a story that I heard. Actually, I heard this for the very, very first time. I was attending a conference in Nashville, USA. It was a marketing conference, 2020, right at the start of the uh, COVID. Um, in fact, they were talking about COVID possibly being in the USA when I was there, when I got back at, you know, at the airport, everyone was wearing masks. They're asking questions like, have you been in China in the last seven days? Uh, you know, electronic uh, gateways coming in where you just scan your passport were no longer working. And it was like, okay, this is serious. And of course the whole world went into lockdown after that. But while I was at this conference, there was a, a speaker there called Prince. Now, not the musician, but actually a speaker. You go to YouTube uh, and you put in Prince Houdini story, you'll come up with the guy I'm talking about. And he's a real storyteller. And he told the story about Harry Houdini. And it was so relevant to what I, my message for you today. And the story goes, Harry Houdini, of course, he's the great escape artist. There was no lock, no um, no chain, no cell, no box, no nothing that could contain the guy. He could get out of it. And he was obviously very comfortable with his skills that he could beat absolutely any challenge that comes his way. And he got into the media and said, you know, I challenge anybody. I can break any lock. I can get out of any jail cell, et cetera. And uh, one small old style jail from a couple of hours away from a deeper part of the South in America, in America called, um, called him or got in contact with his agent or whoever and said, look, We've got a challenge for you. See if you can come and break out of our jail cell. Of course, Houdini accepted. And he said, look, I'll be out of that jail cell within five minutes. All righty. So he drove down to the jail cell and was led into there. And they slammed the big, heavy iron door. Uh, and uh, they did ask a condition that he only wears civilian clothing. You'll see other pictures of Harry Houdini online where he's near naked, but he had clothing on uh, and he got to work. He actually then pulled out of his belt a 10 inch um, length of steel wire and he began. And he just uh, five minutes came and went and you could see a little bit of frustration in his face. He wasn't able to break this particular lock. He was picking it, just couldn't get it. After half an hour, he's starting to panic. The beads of sweat are now coming out on his forehead. You know, sweat is starting to drip on his face. He's looking worried, like, I can't break out of this lock. And an hour later, he puts up his hands. He's surrendered. He's defeated. His confidence has been blown out of the water. And he said, look, I can't get through this lock. Please let me out of this cell. And all they did was went over this big, heavy iron door and slid it open. It wasn't locked. My goodness me, he didn't check it or anything like that. The door wasn't locked. And of course, he felt embarrassed about it. But here is my point is that, and as Prince explains in the story, Houdini, in his mind, the door was locked. Even though it wasn't the truth, in his mind, it was. And this is where I now talk about fees in property management and the amount of businesses I've worked with and in, in, in all sorts of areas, in, in Launceston, in regional city in Tasmania, in Hamilton, a big regional city in New Zealand, of course, Auckland. Uh, any major city here in Australia, Toowoomba, Queensland, or any place that you show me, I've worked with officers, or most probably have, they're all surrounded by cheap agents. And despite that environment, the agency has been able to charge a lot better fees than their competitors. All righty. Now, um, I, I could go through the agencies, the, probably the minimum effect in increase in total fee income, that's management fees, leasing fees, other fees, or all fees, um, it, the, probably the minimum that we're able to see overnight, once they do mindset training, they put it into place overnight, the next new business that they're signing up, they're signing up at least 50% fee income per property per year at least. Well, commonly, I've seen 100%, so, dub, uh, so doubling the total fee income they've earned for that property over the next year. Um, and the highest we've seen is 145% increase. And that happened in Toowoomba. But every one of those agents were surrounded by cheap agents and their fees never changed. So how is that possible? Because right now, that door, that jail cell in your mind is locked. And I'm telling you, it's open. Because, and if I just do a quick screen share, the people that are watching the video, you'll see it. If you're not watching this, it's no big deal. But um, 
if if we just move on here, the, the problem is, is that I call it the big elephant in the room. It's the room with the big butt, all right? The elephant with the big butt. And we've got to deal with that elephant because unless you actually deal with why your door is locked when I know it's not true, you're never going to be able to achieve what I say that you can, all right? Remember, this Win Your Worth podcast series is very much about you never earn what you're worth, but only what you believe that you're worth. And right now, you've got a belief issue in place and your jail cell door is shut. It's locked. You don't believe that that's possible. And quite frankly, you're probably thinking of all those things that I just spouted off before with Launceston and Hamilton and Toowoomba and all of that. You're thinking, well, that's all good and well for them, but that won't work in my rent role because... All right. And you and I know you just had that conversation in your head. Right. So hoping I, I, we can continue with, um, with 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 that here. But one thing I want you to understand is that and in my book, the PM fee script secrets, if you haven't got that, I want you to get it. We go through 50 different fee objections that people can throw at you and the response that you can use to then negotiate full fees. But one of the laws in there. Uh, that we talk about, the law of the fee lid, that just simply means that your door is locked. It's shut. You can't do any better. You can't do any better, otherwise you would be, right? It's a good question, but that is, you can see, that is the law of the fee lid firmly in place. Now, we can actually override the law of the fee lid with the law of the better fee. For example, the law of the better fee is very simply, if you believe you should be should be charging that fee. You've got a very strong conviction. It's like, damn it, Darren's right. I should be charging $99 for routine inspections. Why should I have that included in my management fee? Then you're going to be able to, once you know how to answer it, some questions, why are you charging that routine inspection fee when none of your rivals charge it? Oh, it's because we do X, Y, Z. And of course, I've got that answered in my book, the PM Fee Script Secrets. If you haven't got it, just go to stopdiscountingfees.com. That's stop discountingfees.com. All you got to do is pay for shipping and get it. But anyway, let's move on. So that's the law of the fee lid. That is the big but, all righty, that I talk about. That's why you can't do better because you've got uh, your prison door is locked in your mind, even though I'm saying it's open. So let's have a look at some of the big but reasons that you've probably got right now. So my bet is, so of course the big but is, but Darren, I can't do that. Because if I was in your office right now and I said, you can do this, you can get better fees, you'll have, but Darren, I can't because, and then you'll give me your big but. So it could be, well, Darren, what's the management fee for? We commonly see that on the Eastern states. If I suggest start charging for inspections, ingoings, outgoings, or routine inspections, I get, but Darren, what's the management fee for? All righty. Or it could be our owners, our owners only care about cheap fees. You don't know the owners that we've got in our area, Darren. Or Darren, my rivals don't charge those fees, so how can I do that? In other words, you believe that your rivals will dictate to you your fee income, and they set the benchmark, not you. Problem with that, of course, they keep on discounting. What are you going to do? You see how that there's that 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 particular rule isn't going to work. You can't take part in the race to the bottom. You can't be one of those cyclists simply because they're doing it. All right. Now, if we're cheaper, Darren, we'll grow faster and get more or whatever. So let's have a look at some of these big butts here. Now, firstly, if you think that but what's the management fee for, Darren, that should be included in the management fee. Well, I don't know where that rule book is that says what must be charged under the management fee and what should be charged separately. But my challenge to you is, well, for example, we, we've got some debt collection going on with IGT at the moment with some, some um, uh, debts uh, of the past and debt collection agencies charging us 22% plus a fee to go and collect those. All righty, now 22%, that's pretty high. And you're charging six, seven percent, maybe, um, for your management fee. And you got all this other stuff also included. What I'm saying is that you should be able to justify just the rent collection alone, with all the work and the infrastructure you got in place, the property management software, the training. If someone doesn't pay, you, then you the, the process that you that that's worth something, guys. And if a debt collector agency is charging twenty two percent, and I've been told up to thirty percent. Why do you think you could just, why don't you think you can just justify a loan rent collection in your management fee? Get your thinking, doesn't it? And I just want you to think on this. Now, my other point is, 
But if you say, well, Darren, what's the management fee for? Those fees should be in the management fee. Well, my question to you then is, why are you charging a leasing or a letting fee separately? Why are you charging a management fee separately? Why are you charging a lease renewal fee separately? Why are you charging a monthly admin fee separately or an annual statement or something like that? Good point, right? So again, it's just a mindset. This is not a market issue. Owners will pay those fees. It's your mindset that stops you. It's your locked jail cell door. All right, now also, but Darren, owners only care about cheap fees. Let's get into this. Now, the truth is owners don't lose sleep over getting cheap fees. They lose sleep over other things. They lose sleep over, particularly when they have never rented a property before, they're scared of their mortgage not being paid. They're scared of the tenant from hell, doing the wrong thing, destroying the property, all of those things. That's what they actually lose sleep over. So I did a poll into a property investors group. Uh, we got quite a number of votes. I'll put in two options only that they could choose from, one or the other. First option I put in was they are a reliable quality property manager. That's what property investors, and the question was, when it comes to choosing a property manager, what's the most important thing to you? I put that to a whole group of property investors. And it, the, the, the choice was they, they, they want a quality, reliable property manager, or do they want cheap or cheaper fees? There were the two options, quality, property, uh, quality uh, reliable property manager, or fees. Okay, then someone put in a third option, a combination of both. They want the best of both worlds. And then someone put in, oh, well, um, I want a property manager that's not managing excessive properties. Good point. But as you know, that's part of a quality, reliable property manager. Another one, they're, they're not afraid to put up rents. Well, that's part of that effective, reliable, quality property manager. They have knowledge of tenancy law. So that there was a whole heap of them added on that we could easily put into choice number one. And at the end of the day, after all the votes were counted, and also that people had an option right through the whole thing really early, they could choose a choice of both or cheaper fees, 90% of people went for choice number one. They want a quality, reliable property manager. And that falls completely in line with the sleepless nights they've probably been, been having or would have around they want a quality property manager to make sure the rent's paid on time because they're scared of paying two mortgages and also they're scared of getting the tenant from hell. That is their primary motive, everybody. It's not that they want cheap fees course if they're trying to get cheap fees they're simply popping the question because you work in real estate your fees are negotiable but those same people might try it on you they'll try it at the second hand car yard they'll try it just like you when you go to bali to get a bag or a dress or a t-shirt or something like that but they won't go and try that down at mcdonald's on a big mac or they won't try getting a discount down at target or a supermarket or something can you see the point it's simply they're just moving into the game of negotiation we've got some other podcast here that it's really just a buying signal if they say but the other agent is cheaper they're not necessarily going to go to that other agent they're just trying you out just negotiations you need to get good at negotiating full fees giving a good response why you're not able to do that and my book the pm fee script secrets covers all of that all right make sure you've got that book all righty now but Darren, my rivals don't charge, then how can I do that? And very, very simple. You need to understand the law of the main game. We've got that covered in the book as well. Very simple. Two owners at a barbecue talking about property management. One guy says, well, who's managing your property? He says, well, I'm with ABC Real Estate. Oh my goodness, I'm with XYZ Realty. What are you getting charged? And he says, well, I'm getting charged 7%. The other guy says, well, I'm getting charged 6%. But they didn't discuss any other fees, did they? And why is that? Because... They, they don't really care about them or they overlooked them, they forgot about them, or they simply not important in the whole scheme of things. People focus on the management fee more than anything. When it comes to discounting, what do people generally focus on? You'll say, Darren, the objections I get are always around the management fee. Correct. It might be a one or two percent discount, but they don't focus on the other stuff, do they? So the whole point is here is that though you keep your management fee at market, you do your add-ons, all the other stuff. It's so much easier to put them on than try and, let's say, get a much better management fee in the market because there's a lot more resistance, but only around the management fee, not the other stuff. All righty. So that's where we get um, the traction. Now, I've got a good story here to illustrate that. I was working with three BDMs in Sydney. We we're rolling out a $99 routine inspection fee. And they all told me, Darren, that's not going to work here. Rivals won't pay. 
as in I should say owners won't pay because our rivals don't charge uh, those fees. It's never been done before. I've never seen anyone charge it, Darren. What's the management fee for? Big buck, big buck, big buck. We did the mindset training and immediately two BDMs, every property they were then signing up, was signing up at full $99 routine inspections. However, one guy was lagging behind. He kept on saying owners won't pay, owners won't pay. I knew it was a mindset issue because the other two BDMs had just proven it's a mindset issue not a market issue because now the market was paying. So we knew it wasn't a market issue. So I did some more training. And now since January, every property that those three BDMs have signed up, we're, we're nearly in November. All right. Every property has now been at full routine inspection. So was it a market issue? Was it a mindset issue? Of course, it was a locked jail cell door issue, which we were able to open in their minds. All righty. Now, also, I dealt with a property manager. I remember I was in Adelaide training there. There was a property manager that came along that only been in the business for four weeks. She heard my session. She went back. She started charging for ingoing inspections. I'd never seen anyone in South Australia do that before. But her issue was that she hadn't been in the job long enough to develop a big butt. She didn't realize that that wasn't normal. She just started charging ingoing inspections. No, ever, no one ever questioned it. I know another guy in the Northwest in Sydney, he's been charging ingoing inspections. None of his rivals charge it, but it doesn't matter. No one's ever questioned it. I remember right back in the day, 20 years ago, I was charging a final inspection fee because I just thought they sucked and they're really hard. So I've got to be charging a fee for it. Not once did an owner question it. Not once did my rivals ever do it. All right, you've got to understand the law of the main game. Just keep your management fee at rack rate accepted normal do the work and the other stuff, all righty? And that's how these agencies I've worked with in Launceston, in Toowoomba, in the big cities, in Hamilton, in Auckland, all these different places, in America, in New Mexico. We'll talk about the story coming up. Um, and, and here it is, New Mexico. I had an agent call me up, Darren. We're one of six agents in town, a little town called Farmington in the northern part of New Mexico, just south of the Colorado border. And he said, Darren, we've got six agents in town. We're all doing 10%. No one's charging anything else. And we know we're worth a lot more. So I worked with that agency. We installed a leasing fee, a, a lease renewal fee, routine inspection fee, I think a monthly admin fee, um, and some tenant fees because we can do that in America, of course, not in Australia and New Zealand. And they now they went from $125 per property per month in fee income. Three years later, they were hitting $266 average fee income per property per month. They more than doubled their fee income. And they said, Darren, after that, we only care about how can we make more with what we've got? We don't want to grow more in size, which means we have to put on more staff. We don't want any of that. We just want to be able to get more fee income because the bank account doesn't matter if it's a couple more zeros on the end, does it? You don't need more infrastructure on that. All right. Before I finish up, Here's another one here. But Darren, if we were cheaper, we'll grow faster and more. This is a big lie out there, especially with startup businesses where they feel they have to come in cheap to compete, to grow faster, to get the runs on the board. But it's not true. Your rent roll growth rates, the rate that you bring uh, business in is completely centered on your rent roll growth strategies and the activities that you do to generate leads. All righty. It's your fees don't dictate the speed, how fast or how slow you bring in new business. All righty. So I had a call from uh, a business owner in Wellington. She said, Darren, I know you're not going to like it. I've got six properties now on my rent roll. My fees are cheap because I want to get the growth. I questioned her and I said, look, do you feel that you're as good as those other agents down the road? And she said, hell yeah, I'm a million times better. And I said, well, I believe you are. So why then are you then at the same price or cheaper than those other agents that you feel you are so much better than? And she said, good point. So we, we massaged her fees. Of course, we kept a management fee at sort of the rack rate normal, did the work and the other stuff, added some new fees in. And immediately she was signing up new fees. Her growth rates never changed. She was still bringing business in at a fast rate. Talked for about six weeks later and she said, Darren, I'm amazed. This is incredible. 
I, I, I'm so glad I spoke to you and I said, well, I was kind to you before. Let's go next level. Now you see it. Now you believe it. Let's go next level. And we took it to the most expensive agent in Wellington, New Zealand, and her growth rates did not slow down. She went from signing up equivalent or possibly a thousand dollars a year fee income per property, which was crazy low for her. And I said, by the time you get to 60 properties, you'll be ready to take on a new property manager and you're not going to be able to afford it and you're going to hit the wall. And she said, so glad, Darren, that never happened because now she's signing up business at at least $3,000 per year per property. All right, it made a big difference for her and I'm so glad she got it right from the start. It's just a fallacy, everybody, okay? So I just really encourage you that you got to question the door that you think is locked is actually open. All right. Now, if you want to talk to me about getting better fees, book into my diary at getbetterfees.com. This is going to, uh, I can talk to you about getting better fees and new business and of course your current owners as well. Otherwise, make sure you get my book, stopdiscountingfees.com. It is the handbook that's going to help you do all of that. You've got to have a copy next to your desk, at least if not a couple. But I just want to say thanks very much, everyone. I've really enjoyed this, 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 this podcast. I hope you've got a lot out of it. I hope you now realize that your big jail cell door isn't locked, but in fact, you can open it. Take care. I'll see you in the next podcast show. Cheers.